It's summer, it's hot, and you've got questions about your C5's cooling system. Toys for life. By far the most common question I get is, what's the normal operating temperature for the C5 Corvette? And the answer is a pretty wide range that might surprise you. It's 190 degrees all the way to 230. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Toys for Life. That seems awfully hot. Can you prove it? Why, yes, I can prove it. Take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and open up HP tuners. From there, I'm going to open up a stock 2003 Corvette file. And you can see in the general fan section, fan number one turns on at 226, off at 219. Fan number two goes on at 235 and shuts off at 227. So this is the way GM intended it, folks. The next most common question is, should I install a cooler 160 degree thermostat? The answer is no for two reasons. First, when switching to a 160 degree thermostat from approximately a stock 187 degree thermostat, it won't really do anything for a street driven engine except it'll take a little bit longer for the coolant temperature to get to 190 degrees. Once you get to approximately 195 degrees, both the 160 and the 187 will behave about exactly the same. Second, for colder weather, if you're driving more than 30 miles per hour, the temperature of the coolant will probably stay somewhere between 160 and 180, which doesn't allow for the moisture to properly evaporate from the engine oil. And secondly, engines are designed with expansion in mind and tolerances, so you won't have the proper clearances between the aluminum pistons and the steel sleeve liners, as well as crank bearings and crank journals. For drag racing purposes, a lot of times an engine will make more horsepower if the coolant temperature is somewhere around 150, 160 degrees because that is uh, contributing to cooler, denser air intake, which makes more horsepower. Just keep in mind you're stressing that motor out at cooler temperatures outside of the design parameters for that piston expansion and those bearings and crank expansion as well. That could be a bad thing. So what can you do to improve your C5's cooling system performance? Well, C5's are 20 years old now, and that's a lot of time for dirt, bugs, and all kinds of other garbage to get inside and clog up your AC condenser and your radiator, because it is fed from down low. So if you haven't done so recently, remove your fan shroud assembly and using compressed air and an appropriate tool, make sure you blow out everything you can from the engine bay forward through the radiator and AC condenser. Here's a little footage of when I did mine about a year or so ago. So now that my radiator is clean, is it a good idea to lower my fan on and off temps? And if so, what's the best way to do that? So GM sets the fans on the relatively high side for a couple of reasons. One, to keep the oil hot enough to evaporate any moisture. Two, to optimize emissions. And three, to prevent premature fan wear. Now, as C5 Corvette enthusiasts, we don't exactly have the same set of concerns as the factory GM engineers. So I like to set my fans at 203 for the low fan and 208 for the high fan. And what this does is it gives a lot lower under hood temperatures, which also decreases the air intake temperatures, freeing up a few more horsepower. If you decide to alter your cooling fan temperatures, you've got a few options available to you. You can use HP tuners to do it yourself, or you can look for a reputable local tuner. There's also aftermarket fan controllers, which allow you to mechanically control the temperature of the fan, and some people like to do a hot wire method where they hot wire the low fan on for track events so it's on the whole time. And then when they leave, they pull the hot wire so that the fan runs as normal. However you decide to do it, a quick Google search of C5 fan controller temperature will yield plenty of options. Should I go with an aftermarket radiator like DeWitt's for around $670? While I'm sure they're better than stock and they clearly are a work of art, I'm not convinced that they're necessary for most people. What I can say firsthand for sure is that after six years of driving this C5 in the Midwest, I haven't had any cooling related issues whatsoever. In the past two years, 
it's been supercharged and I still haven't had any issues. But if I lived in the southwest United States, I'm pretty sure there'd be a DeWitt's radiator under my hood. The next item to talk about will be changing your C5 coolant. What coolant to use and how do you go about changing it without getting any of those steam pockets that can cause all kinds of issues. Fortunately, my C5 is due for a coolant change now and I'll be making a video of that soon and I'll respond to any questions that you might have. So please include the questions in the comments below. So guys, if you like this video and you learned something, please remember to share, like, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.